So today we're going to have a look at some of these USB Type-C PD trigger boards or decoy boards. The idea with these boards is that you plug in a USB Type-C power delivery cable in here and you then get a range of voltages out the other end. They all usually are set up to output 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts or 20 volts and each of them have a different method of switching between the voltages. So in this case there's a button to go through the voltages, a set of LEDs down the side which indicate the voltage that you have selected and a variety of options on the back in terms of if you are to solder over certain points you can permanently have the uh, module at that voltage. In this case there's a set of dip switches and in the dip switches you then pick a set of switches in certain directions based on voltage you're after. And then there's the most simple version of the three I've got here where what you do is you select the voltage and in this case we've only got 9, 12, 15 and 20. You select the voltage by soldering one of these points to the neighbouring resistor and in which case that gives you the selection and then it's permanent at that point. So to quickly test some of these let's have a look. So this is plugged into a Type-C power delivery adapter should be capable of 100 watts but I've not got a 100 watt device to really test it on at the moment but we'll just see the concept of how it works so you plug it in and there you go showing the outputs 5 volts 9 volts 12 volts 15 volts 20 volts just unplug that a second and what we need to do is actually test this to test we'll bring in the multimeter just add some cables here to make it easier to attach the multimeter go so multimeter obviously reading zero at the moment 5 volts 5.067 9 volts 9.1 12 volts 12.09 15 volts and 20 volts I personally find these particularly useful for a number of devices that I've got that run off 12 volts and I don't always have a 12 volt power supply nearby but these days I seem to more so have a Type-C adapter nearby um, and one of these and I can quickly fire up something that requires 12 volts. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just solder this at the back over the 12 volt setting. Um, we'll come back and we'll see what happens when that's soldered up. You can see I've soldered over the 12 volt pads, so we'll see what happens once it's powered up. straight to 12 volts. No messing, permanently set to 12 volts. If I press the button it will not go to any other setting. So in which case, no matter when I use this, it will always be 12 volts. Another test I've got will be to plug in a set of 12 volt LED fairy lights just to show 
power is fully passing through and you can use the 12 volts. So instead, I've added a DC barrel jack. Put the fairy lights in. Then plug the Type C adapter in, and there we go. 12 volts safely passing through from USB PD adapter, and there you go, 12 volts. Press the button, nothing changes, permanently set, nice and safe. Next, we'll have a look at this version. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to solder a header onto here. So I'll be back in a second. There we go. Got a header on it. So we can now do some testing. So what we'll initially do is plug in the multimeter. And then we will Plug in the PD cable and see what voltage we've got it set as. So initially it's there set as 5 volts. So, so the next test will be to change the dip switches. So let's have a look at how to do that. Looks like there's a bit of captain tape on top of here to keep them secure. This might be difficult to get off. There we go. Removed it there. And you can see that all the dip switches are set to off. And if we go, actually it'd be easier to look at this one. If you look at the back, there isn't actually a setting for that, so it must just default to 5 volts when everything is off. So let's try the actual 5 volt setting, which is 1 and 2 on and 3 off. So in theory, this should be 5 volts as well. There we are. So let's see if we can change it whilst it's on. So if we turn S3 all the way up, we should be on 9 volts. And there we are, 9 volts. We turn S2 to 0 to off, and we should hit 12 volts. There we go. Next up, 15 volts, which is um, S1 and S2 off. 15, and to go up to 20, we want S2 to on. So if we turn them all on, that's 9 volts. And if we turn them all off, That goes to 5 volts, so there's two 5 volt settings. With them all on, or actually, there's more than one 5 volt setting. So it looks like there's a number of 5 volt settings. So anything with S3 as off is 5 volts. be it with whatever combination of S1 and 2. I guess that's a safety mechanism because it's the lowest voltage and it's the least likely to cause any damage. So let's set it to 12 volts. And I'll just unplug it temporarily and we'll try the LEDs again.
there we go. LEDs lit, 12 volt working fine. So the next option is this tiny little board. As you can see, 9, 12, 15 and 20 volt options. This currently has a zero ohm bridging resistor over the 12 volts. So if we test this, my guess is it's going to be outputting 12 volts as a default. Plug it in. Blue LED indicator there, so you can be aware of whether it's on or off. If we come in with a multimeter, we'll be able to test the output voltage. And there we go, 12 volts. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to solder some wires on this and we're going to change the voltage setting to 20 volts just to show that we can go through and change it quite easily. It might be difficult to see but we've now bridged at the 20 volt point. So we'll try this one out. Turned on. There we go, outputting 20 volts. Must admit, that was a little bit harder to solder than I would have hoped. Um, the bridge on the back of the switching one was much easier to do. But you do it once and it's done. And in with such a small component, you might prefer the smaller board over the larger board. I'll do a similar test now with this and I'll add the LEDs whilst it's set on 12 volts so you can see that it does in fact help at 12 volts and the LEDs work fine. So we now have some leads soldered on. This is the default setting of 12 volts, which is again what I'm looking for. In we go, and there we go. LEDs on, 12 volts passing through. Working great. So that's just a quick video on a variety of USB power delivery decoy, trigger, dummy boards, various names for these things and what they can do for you. I'll probably use these quite a bit going forward because it does save having 12 volt power supplies around when you want to do some quick testing, you want to check if some LEDs work, you've got other 12 volt devices and it seems a quite stable voltage, doesn't seem to vary too much. But the variety of them can offer different things for you. This one being very permanent and very small. This one being a set of dip switches that you can change if you need to, but sometimes switches can be a bit dangerous. You know, they're very small, but at the same time they could get flicked. And then this one sort of offers the best of both worlds. You can switch through, you can lock it. There's various other locking settings which can be explored. But otherwise, I think this, this one's the most versatile. I'd say this one is certainly the most discreet. All of these can be found all over AliExpress and eBay, so buy whichever one you want.